go first. Good morning, Coach Moore. Good appreciate, morning. Appreciate you uh, taking out this time. Uh, has to be a very exciting time. Uh, I can remember the last game I was at. Uh, how how excited you were to see just the coverage and just a, a packed a packed stadium at Reynolds Coliseum and just you know that atmosphere that you were able to have for for, for that home game against North Carolina. I'm ex I'm guessing you're expecting that same type of atmosphere uh, tomorrow night. How exciting is it for you guys to be hosting games like this top five, a top five showdown within the ACC in front of your home crowd and just to see the fruits of your labor that you've built over the years with this program? Well, again, uh, our fans have been unbelievable. Uh, I think we've already sold out several games uh, coming up down the stretch. Uh, so it's exciting. It's great for our players. They love, you know, playing in front of a big crowd, playing in front of a packed house. And obviously, this is a you know a marquee game. It's one you circled, you know, way back as soon as the schedule came out. Uh, you know, Louisville's going to be there, and and uh, Jeff Walls does a great job. Uh, you knew it was going to be a big game, and and sure enough, here we are. And uh, you know, it's exciting for the players. This is this is why you do all that work in the off season, the summer, and things is to put yourself in a position to play on the big stage in these big games. So. I think we're all excited about the opportunity. With with how battle tested you guys have been throughout this year, um, how confident are you in the preparation that your your team will have against a very strong Louisville squad? Yeah, you know, again, I think we've played a great uh, non conference schedule, and then we've jumped into the league play and played some big games already. So, yeah, you know, I think we're ready. Obviously, Louisville's very hot now. They've won fifteen straight. Uh, so they come in here with a lot of momentum, a lot of confidence. And, uh, you know, we were able to go over there and, and beat them at their place last year. So I know they're going to come in here, uh, ready to try to quieten the crowd a little bit. And, and, uh, hopefully, hopefully that doesn't happen. Jake, you can go ahead. Hey Wes, um, with the kind of, with the combination, you know, of, such a deep roster and then the last month or so a lot of blowout wins have you kind of seen a difference in the energy levels or kind of just health of the team in general this deep into the season compared to you know teams of years past yeah i don't know this team's been uh, a, a little uh, up and down uh, in some ways uh, you know probably with all these veterans we've got some kids that have been here five years we've got other you know we got reina who's played five years you got a Lisa who's a four year senior, uh, you know, they've all been battle tested and, and probably there's times they wanted to say, ah, oh, let's move on. Let's get to March. And uh, we got to, you know, we got to keep uh, trying to use this time as dress rehearsal, so to speak, making sure that we're cleaning stuff up and and that we're at our best in March. So uh, I think it's a combination of things. Uh, I do feel like. Uh, you know, in, in some of these big games, we've come out with a lot of energy and a lot of urgency. I would like to see that every night, uh, be consistent with it. But, you know, again, I thought we had it Sunday uh, against Duke, and hopefully that's going to carry over. And, uh, you know, I know you don't have to say a whole lot about uh, getting them up for this game. Uh, I think they'll be excited and have a lot of energy, hopefully. So, uh, again, we'd like to see us be a little more consistent with that. Uh, but, uh, you know, we've we've been able to uh, survive and, and keep moving forward and uh, hopefully uh, we'll start building and getting the momentum we need as we head towards postseason. Alec, go ahead. Yeah, Wes, you mentioned, I think it was before the Carolina game that you hadn't been happy with the defensive performances in the few games before that since then two games where you've held an opponent to 45 and Duke was at 22 I was just curious how you would assess kind of the way you guys have been playing on that end of the court in the last two weeks it's been better it's been better and like I said though I you want to see it consistently and uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, you know making good decisions out there when we're guarding the ball and uh, when there's a pick on the ball involved uh, making a, a quick decision and read and, and go with it. Uh, part of it's that. And, um, you know, again, I still think uh, that's where we're, that's our, that's going to be uh, what makes or breaks us, you know, our energy and our urgency on defense and on the boards, because, uh, 
you know, we're, we want to be a team that competes for championships and you're going to have a night or two where you don't shoot well and to survive and stay in the hunt, you're going to have to defend and rebound. So hopefully that point's getting across and, uh, you know, going back and watched our games from a year ago against Louisville, both at their place and in the tournament. And I just loved the way, you know, our, the way we were moving, our, uh, the way we were flying around defensively. Uh, so hopefully we'll have that again uh, Thursday night and, and for the rest of the season, for that matter, I hope. James, go ahead. Yeah, Wes, I think Louisville is holding teams to 49 points per game. Yeah. which is an, an unreal number. Um, just what is it they do well defensively? What makes them so successful on that side of the ball? Well, a big part of it is what we were just talking about. I mean, they just play hard now. I mean, they uh, uh, they put a lot of pressure on you. They get in the passing lanes. They pressure the ball. Uh, you know, Jeff does a good job of mixing things up. So they may switch. They may show big, first pick on the ball. They may trap it. Uh, they're going to press, you know, a lot of times it's man to man, uh, and they'll pick you up full court, but they'll also do a full court zone press, uh, where you have to make some decisions and read the, read the D. And, uh, so again, they just, uh, they play hard They get after you. And I think, uh, he's done a great job of selling them on the idea that, you know, this is, this is what's going to determine our fate is how well we defend and uh, they're doing a heck of a job of it. I think they're fourth in the country, Georgia Tech's the other team in our conference is doing a great job of it. So that, that puts, first of all, puts a lot of pressure on you offensively to handle the ball, make good reads, burn the help, so to speak, because uh, they do a great job of helping from, from all over the court, not just the weak side, but everywhere. Uh, but it also puts a lot of pressure on your defense because you know they're going to try to keep the score low and uh, they're going to try to, you know, make it difficult for you to run your stuff. And so that puts a lot of pressure on your defense to keep up, so to speak. And also they've added Ingsler from, from Syracuse. What does she add to their team that maybe you haven't seen from them the last couple of years? Well, I mean, Louisville's been good for a long time. So, uh, you know, but, but Ingsler's, you know, arguably she's getting – She's filling up a stat sheet, okay? I mean, you look at her. Uh, first of all, she can score the heck out of it, whether it be inside, off the bounce, shooting the three. Uh, defensively, she's going to make steals. She flies around all over the court. And, you know, she's six one or six two, whatever, and she can move well and make plays. She's also big time on the offensive boards. Uh, she just, like I said, she'll block shots. She does everything. And... Uh, She's a big, big concern, you know, on both ends of the floor, but especially trying to slow her down offensively and in transition. Uh, she's really good. Thanks, Wes. Mm -hmm. Todd, you can go ahead. Yeah, Wes, you guys have done a good job of, of avoiding players missing time due to COVID. I mean, what is there a, a certain, uh, I guess, have you guys been working at that? Is this something you guys have have, have, have made it made it a point to, to to emphasize well i mean i do think uh you know we're probably all everybody's trying to be more conscious of it and and avoid situations as much as possible uh but we you know we had a few early uh we went to clemson we were missing a couple of players and all three assistant coaches so we haven't fully uh, dodged it but uh you know nowadays i mean again uh Thank goodness, most of the time, the symptoms have not been uh, very strong, and uh, hopefully that's the case. And um, But, you know, we're all – it's day-to-day. -day. It really is. And not just you, your opponents also. You know, again, we were scheduled to play Notre Dame and prepared for them. And then, you know, Friday evening, we find out, oh, no, you're going to Miami instead, and you got one day to prepare for them. And so uh, it's – you know, and – and, uh, you know, my wife said something about, you just got to be more flexible. And I said, yeah, that's really a strength of mine, isn't it? And uh, when she got her got up off the floor from laughing, uh, you know, it was, it was okay. But. Jake, you can go ahead. Yeah. If you just like, you know, if you just look at 
on a game to game basis, Jakia's numbers, they're not, you know, quite what you've come to expect from the last couple of years. But I'm curious, you know, when you're watching live and then when you go back and watch the film, do you kind of notice what the numbers would say is a, maybe a drop in performance? But when you're watching it, do you think that that reflects what the box score reflects? Well, I think it's a combination of things. First of all, you got to realize that's why, you know, a lot of times kids come in their freshman year or sophomore year and they put up numbers and everything's great. Uh, it's kind of like tennis. You know how they uh, match them up, number one versus number one, number two versus number two. Well, your sophomore year, the other team may have their third best perimeter defender on you. Uh, and then when you start building a reputation, now it's going to be their number one defender on you. So I think that's a factor some. I think she's pressing a little bit. I also think we got more scorers now. I mean, uh, you know, you can't help but realize, you know, Diamond Johnson's going to, you know, she's going to take some of the numbers. I mean, that's just a uh, fact of life. And so we got a lot of people, you know, Kai shooting the ball well. Raina shoots it well. Obviously, Elisa inside scoring the ball. Uh, KJ, Jada Boy, we got a lot of people that can score. So if a team wants to concentrate on one player, then I think other people are going to benefit from it. But we have talked, too, about, you know, people realize she's, a, you know, a great shooter. So they're really extending their D and and she's she's going away you know fading further out when i think she'll be better served if she can go back door some attack off the bounce some and then when she goes off the bounce she's got a great jump shot you don't have to get all the way into the help you can pull up or she's done a really good job here recently of kicking the ball uh, to the open shooter because she draws a lot of attention so you know our kids are pretty good uh, I mean, everybody has someone in their ear telling them you need these numbers or whatever, but our kids have been pretty good, you know, about sharing the ball and being unselfish. And uh, you just got to take what the defense gives you. And some nights, uh, you know, it's like a, uh, it's like a defensive lineman in football. If they want to double team you, somebody else may get the sack, but you know, Hey, the, the whole idea is for the team to be successful and, and Jakia helps our team be successful. Mitchell, go ahead. Yeah, Wes, um, I know earlier you said, you know, this is a game that the, that the players really get get excited for. Um, but you and you and Jeff have kind of been doing this for for a couple of years now, too. Uh, you know, having teams at the top of the top of the league. Um, is this a game that, that you guys get excited for as well? I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, you know, again, they've got great talent. They're well coached, uh, you know. I, I don't know if I'd call that excited. Uh, you know, we'll see, you know, some nights it feels like a root canal. So uh, it's, you know, it is though, you want to be in this position, you know, uh, it's sometimes I like being the one that's laying low in the weeds and the grass, you know, and just everybody ignore us down here, but this is what you work for to put yourself in a position that you're in these marquee games. And, you know, when you're on ESPN, it's a big game. And, uh, you know, when Louisville ranked number three in the country, we're ranked number four for what it's worth. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a big game. And so you'd rather be that than than uh, in, irrelevant, you know. So, again, yeah, from that standpoint, we're excited and very blessed. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you about Jada Boyd. Um, I think over her last five games or so, she's averaging about – nine points and six rebounds seem to kind of be providing that boost off the bench that yep. you guys were hoping for, you know, before she got injured. Um, does, yep. does it feel like she's kind of at that point now where you're getting kind of what you want out of her? Yeah, I think she's playing really well. And, uh, you know, constantly, uh, you know, on her about getting to the offensive boards uh, because she's really, really good at that. Uh, you know, as her shots improve, sometimes she tends to hang out out there looking for that shot. Uh, but, uh, you know, she's shooting the ball well. She's getting to the rim, which which I love seeing. You know, I, I love to see her run the floor in transition because when she goes, uh, there's not many people that can keep up with her. Uh, but, yeah, she's doing a lot of things well for us. I think that's really important with KJ, you know, still working her way back to 100% from her surgery and all. Uh, you know, Jada Boyd is – is very critical to what we're doing and, and to this team. And 
just like her and Diamond both, uh, you could say we got seven starters for that for that purpose. I mean, again, uh, we got a lot of talented players. So uh, again, yeah, we're excited about about where Jade is at. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got time for these last two. So James, you can go, and then Rob, you're good to go after that. Yeah, Wes, you mentioned a minute ago you like lying in the weeds. I'm interested from when you were, took over at NC State to where you are now as a program, do you sense that you get a level, a different level of intensity from your opponent with the, the recent success you've had the last few years? I don't think there's any doubt. I mean, just like we're talking about our team, right. you know, I wish we were more consistent sometimes with our effort, with our urgency. I keep using those words, but, uh, you know, I think sometimes you go into a game thinking, Okay, we got this. And, uh, you know, then I think there's other games where, you know, you circle it, like I said, on your schedule when, the, when it comes out. And, oh, that's going to be a big game. Who do we have before them? Who do we have after them? You know, how's it sandwiched in there? And uh, so there's no doubt, uh, you know, you're going to get everybody's A game when you're, you know, the wind blows hardest at the top of the flagpole, you know, so – uh, yeah, it's, it's going hard, but like I said, that beats the alternative. So, so we're excited for that and hopefully our players, uh, you know, can handle that and, and realize that's going to make you stronger at the end of the day when you get ready for postseason. All right. And you can go ahead with our last one, Rob. Yes, Wes, uh, the game Louisville and then obviously Vitek is this weekend. Do you think Louisville and Vitek sort of simulate what NC State might face in a hypothetical regional semifinal final situation? Oh, sure. I mean, that's a great comparison. You know, uh, I think Virginia Tech should be ranked top 25 right now. But, uh, you know, obviously Louisville's, you know, one of the top, you know, teams in the country. So, yeah, it's, that's a good point. You know, you're having uh, – having a quick turnaround against two of the best teams in the country. So, yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. Maybe, I, maybe I'll tell my players that, Rob, and I'll, uh, I'll take full credit for thinking of that. It's yours, brother. You can have it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Thank you again for making time for this today, Coach Moore, and we'll see a lot of you all.